Hey everybody, Trick Around is back, and I couldn't be any more happy. Uh, so the current meta has moved a little bit towards controly weather cards and savage bears. Lots of savage bears. So the cards that are best against those two things are cards that don't get hit by savage bear or are resistant to weather. So those for me are these ambush cards. They don't get hit by the bear. And until they flip over, they're not going to get hit by the weather. So you don't have to remove the weather from the board all that much. And if you do have to, you have really easy access to the first lights through the Elven Mercenaries. This deck has three major strategies for winning in the current meta. Uh, part of it is by hiding a lot of points. The Dragoons and the Hawker supports will put points into your hand and allow you to win into the next round. The second strategy is by hiding the points on the board as ambush cards, since the ambush cards don't add to your total, King of Beggars is a lot stronger in an ambush deck. He will almost always get the plus 10 strength, even when he has buffs put on him through the Dragoons and the Hawker supports. Now, you wouldn't want to buff uh, King of Beggars if you had the choice, but if you do, have to, it isn't, uh, it isn't the end of the world, since... A lot of the time, your opponent will try to out-tempo you in the last round, but since most of your bonus points will be put onto the sappers, which are going to be some of the last cards you play, they're not going to add to your total, and effectively, any strength that they have is going to be added to King of Beggars figuratively. So let's say your opponent plays 15 strength worth of points of card, and you just play um, Vern sappers. The strength of the sappers is, is considered zero on the board, until he flips over. So those seven strength are effectively being added to King of Beggars, making this a 14 strength bronze card. 14 strength bronze cards after I think is usually considered a really strong bronze card. So I think that's pretty good. Um, outside of that, we have the Operator Wily combo. So you copy a sapper with Operator. Now this might seem like really hard to do, but you do have Bruver Hoog and you have a lot of deck thinning in this deck. So you copy a sapper with Operator, and then you destroy their copy with Wily. Now, the copy you make will be an exact copy. None of the buffs will carry over, so that's not great. But this makes this a 14-point silver, and it's a huge tempo play, because if your opponent plays the sapper, they're going to immediately lose it. And it's not as strong in their hand as it is in your hand, so you can protect that strength from your opponent's control cards. Now imagine playing against a spell deck and they can't actually target any of your cards on the board. They also cannot simply pass because you could bamboozle them with a Teruvial and they thought, oh, I thought I won this round. Nope. Teruvial is, unless they play a lock card, completely immune. And I don't know any player right now that I've encountered that knows how to play against Ambush because nobody plays Ambush. <laughs> so... I hope you guys have a great day and uh, enjoy this video. No time. So my opponent's playing a bunch of uh, a deck thinning version of. Now, how did that incantation go? Calve, of course, which is a really strong wishlist. thing. Well, it's not as strong as it used to be, so it's kind of a throwback, really. I decide to play the uh, Elven Have Mercenary, strength, my love. and since I 100% chance going to get a rally from it, I'm gonna You'll just do that to thin my deck. Now another option was to play the Dragoon, but I was afraid if I played the Dragoon, my opponent was going to eliminate the Emissary with a uh, with uh, what do you call it, the Brigade card. So I'm gonna remove the cow carcass and make a bear. There's enough cards that I want to destroy with the bear that I think it's justified. One of those cards is the Elven Mercenary since it's not worth that many points. I'm going to play a Dragoon here. Uh, I'm thinking about my other options, but I think a Dragoon here is more effective because I want to play those as early as possible. And I can clear the weather if my opponent decides to play another one with uh, I forgive you. Eat Ida. This time. <laughs> I don't want to play more until I have to. So, 
You mistake so he's going to remove the, for the night, Elven Mercenary Scott. from the board, which is fine. It, it does weaken my uh, oh, ambush cards I've a little bit. Enough. So he's going to hit those. Okay, I'm going to now lock his card, and I'm going to play Dragoon next if things go as planned. So he's going to do that, and now I have a good opportunity to clear weather. Why have you summoned me? You don't really want to clear skies unless there's multiple weathers on the board, or if you are up against a Biting Frost and all your units are in on one row. This deck has a lot of uh, no siege guardian. units, so it's not a huge deal if uh, it's a bigger deal if you're up against weather, excuse me. <laughs> it's a bigger deal. So I, like, my opponent's way ahead of me, so I should just pass. If I had King of Beggars in my hand, which I could have gotten out of uh, Ruverhoog, I could have equalized through that method. But I thought this was wiser. You could argue against me. So I'm going to go with the Hawker. Um, let's figure out what I want to keep in my hand. The Sapper. Oh, I got Saskia. It was unfortunate. My prescription. It really doesn't makes me not lady. want to play my leader. Slaughter them. So I'm gonna just man. play dragoons to catch up. Onward, right ahead. Okay, I got some. I got weathered, which is annoying. Now you can do things against weather to counter it. So I'm going to play a Shiru, because Shiru's safe. I to kill? And I'm going to get rid of... Uh, it would be best to get rid of the Dragoon, because I'm not really going to be able to play it with the weather there. And it also is harder for my opponent to do anything about it. I shall be your eyes, my lord. Okay. Now, if I was smart, I would put Bruvahoog and onto the Seedro or Saskia. But I didn't really want to play Saskia this early into the game. I didn't want to play Saskia until I had mulliganed her out. Now, another thing I could have done is put uh, Morin into the top row, because the positioning of the cards, even if they are immune, I mean, to the Skellige Storm, will still disrupt its effect. Now, this is a lucky... Um, hit Down with Morin because alive. the ability of the medic will not go off. I still am too scared to actually play regret your the uh, Saskia, you but it might have been wiser to do, have done that. Okay, he's going to use another weather card. It's going to damage my uh, Morin. Now, this is a weakness of my positioning. If Morin was on the other side of Shiru, she would have only received two damage. Now, here's another day. mistake. You sh I should not have put Ruverhoog into the melee row. I don't usually have to deal with Skellige Storm kind of like this, but, you know, you get what you get. Uh, Teruvial will now be placed. And his better, he would have been best placed on the far. Um, yes. What is it? Left side of the board, uh, of the siege row, but it won't matter because um, his card's already been damaged a bunch. And this is where I, about when I realize, oh, I made a, a mistake. So I put my Hold unit in the, the correct lines. place. It's now protected. His two storms, which he was going to use to counter me, are um, gone. Had I not mulliganed, I might have had a lot more points in my hand. <laughs> and I could have uh, dealt with the storm immediately. So, Teruvial goes off. Teruvial's immune to weather. This is why I like this deck, because there's so much weather going on. Um, it's immune to weather until, you know, it flips. Uh, that is. Okay. Uh, Avalok is great here, because... The longer this match goes, the better I'm off. Off I am. <laughs> so I'm going to play Avalok. I want to get as many opportunities to get a good Scorch off as I can. 
And with the Elven Mercenaries, I'll be able to pull those Ock to my side. And I know I can get first lights with both of them. We also know that our opponent has a uh, Sapper in their hand. No, not a Sapper. Shame a I have no time. Elven Mercenary in their hand. And they're pro uh, we know that because they brought it back into their deck have strength, my love. with the revived medic card. Uh, I can't say her name. She's 10 strength. Oi, hi there, come so we're going to buff that. That'll protect it from being damaged by my opponent's tech cards. We're not going to put the Elven Mercenaries Everything into the right. melee row because that might mean that it'll get damaged by my opponent's cards. Uh, so we're going to put another card onto the board. A storm is coming. Let's enjoy it's going to allow us to play first can. light, and we want to play first light because it's more points than the uh, Azure's Thunder will ever be. And we're going to put the uh, Sapper to this row, and this will allow us to get four strength from our Elven Mercenaries. Order will triumph. It okay. must this gives triumph. us a great Scorch opportunity. We know that it's safe to play our Sapper, and we need to play the Sapper now, lest our opponent. Um, <laughs> lest our opponent pass too early and it doesn't go off. So we definitely need to play the Sapper now. Give no we need to give it the two turns. We did not know that our opponent had that card. Now we can Scorch out the uh, Blue Mountains. Knight. He doesn't have a good target for uh, his Peter because the only cards, on, all the cards on the board have their base The strength. Nordling's hatred for us will never wane. Our win condition is completely safe. It flips oh, so over, tired. and while we're only one point behind, we do have the Azure's Thunder to win the game. That was great. Yeah. Mistakes were made with the positioning, and that's really important. It's important to know how Skelga Storm works. Okay. Okay, this is my second match. You're going to want to push out your First Lights and your Saskia from your hand for um, since those are cards you're going to pull from your deck. Elven Mercenary is always going to pull a Rally from your deck as long as you have one non-Rally spell in your hand. Since you only have two, like, you get two options from it. And if you looked at the deck list, you, you know that means that I'm always going to get a Rally. It's good to have a deck that is designed right to let you mulligan cards away easily. Make easy mulligan decisions. I've lost too many games because I made the wrong mulligan. Onward, right I almost lost the previous game because of the wrong mulligan. Okay. So I've given my opponent a lot of to think about. Is he going to play this round out long? Then I'm gonna have a huge benefit into the last round. Decks that are designed to win the first round might lose against this kind of deck since they don't really want to. Your mom uh, ever you out. They really don't want. They don't carry enough points to counter what I'm doing right now. Is a better way to put it. Okay. I'm now going to play an Elven Mercenary, and it's going to Have guarantee strength, give me a first light, in which I can use to rally out another card. Since it was a Sapper, it's going to pull my Elven Mercenary to my side of the board, making this an effective 9-strength, um, two-deck card thinning card. And the last time I checked, be thinning three cards, I mean two cards from your deck with one card for 9-strength is pretty good. It's not as effective as, say, um, infantrymen for Northern Realms, but it's, like, effective enough, really. Here, I probably want to play Shiru. Who now, I to kill? getting rid of the lock is actually a problem for Shiru, because you might want to use that lock to demote his, uh, the Unseen Elder, because the Unseen Elder is a win condition for my opponent. However, if my opponent uses the Unseen Elder, that means my Scorch can be the used on a later round when he doesn't secure. have a way to protect the points on his board. 
I don't mind going losing this round, especially since the fact that I went second. Giving me free card advantage. Okay. That the leader ability is a huge point portion of his consume effects. Gone. Blue Mountains! And forcing out that early is really helpful. Now, one of the problems I have is I often mulligan the wrong card. And what you're gonna see me do here is I'm gonna mulligan the first light, which I shouldn't have. I should have mulliganed uh, one of my silver cards since I have almost all my silver cards in my hand. Okay, so I'm gonna copy with Operator my Sapper. And that's because I see the Wily in my hand. Um, that's not necessarily the right play to make. Since you probably want to use Wily on the Necker. But it's better give him a Sapper, which is only seven strength than virtually anything else in my deck. It's going to carry some points onto the next round. We're now going to play a first light. This will thin our deck of some bronze cards. And this will also allow us to carry more points into the next round. Okay. He's going to probably eat... Um, so he ate a... Um, I think he ate a Hawker support, or a, no, he ate my last Dragoon, which is fine. Doesn't hurt me that much. So, I'm gonna just play my seven strength Sapper since it's not a big deal, and the sooner I play it, the better. Since it takes forever for it to do anything. This will also tempt my opponent to pass earlier rather than later. That'll cause, um, this will allow me to play Wily to catch up. It'll even up the card advantage for the most part, but it'll also banish the Necker since it has zero base Blue strength mountains! and doesn't go to the graveyard. So. I'd still have the King of Beggars in my hand. I mean, deck, so that's great. I actually didn't think I was going to get it. Um, oh, and guess what card I got? King of Beggars. <laughs> and now I have all my silver cards. So, we're gonna place more and down early, rather than later. I'm putting it in the siege row because I have effectively three units in the siege row to play. The Scorch could be dead in my hand, so I have to be careful about that. I will at least get Saskia out of Bruvahoog, which is not a bad trade. However, I would have preferred not having all the silvers in my um, hand, <laughs> of course. Okay. This will allow us to put um, Truvial face down. Another card that my opponent really can't do anything about. Another option there was to play Weather. And Morin gets huge value. Mother will be proud. You Here's a clue. If you're up against Trick Around, do not play a five strength or less card that has a huge effect when played. Like King of Beggars will die. If you play uh, play him into Why have you Morin. me? Okay. So the weather actually f triggers I'm after so the card flips. That's important to note. But it at least do a lot of points of damage uh, over time. I still don't really have a good 
car to uh now here i would have really liked to uh Sorry. scorch before things. i played king of beggars now you have to note that the game lags a lot when you play king of beggars <laughs> Actually, do uh, I get really lucky? He has a grave hag. He did not need to play grave hag. Let's hurry. Nothing like a dwarf. He could have waited. Take sport. But it ends up happening. The reason why he didn't wait was that he had succubus, and you're not going to see it until he eventually thinks about playing it. Such a shame, I must kill you. And since he had Succubus, my Scorch was going to be useful regardless. Like, you should always play Grave Hag as your last card. Damn it. He would have won had he uh, just been a little bit patient. Maybe he was, oh, he was waiting for, uh, to use Geralt on something, but I never actually did anything. Required Geralt. So, I, like the way I win die, by six human. points. Yep, you do. This is one of those cases where sometimes the mullig mulligans are going to kill me <laughs> someday, but I'm going to get better at it, okay? Let's get to work! Okay, this is my second ranked game today, and this is, um, I played... Both times against Skellige with Croc on Crate. But the first time I played was against a Wound deck. I barely won due to the fact that my opponent had misplayed a Priestess of Freya. He lost by two points. He, act he revived my Elven Mercenary thinking he still had spells in his deck. He didn't. So he effectively gave me one strength. Or I think he might have pulled a rally and there was no bronze cards left in his deck. It was unfortunate. So if you still want to see that, Onward, it's the ahead. uncut footage is in the video where you can see me try to play against that deck. So I'm gonna, like usual, open up with the dragon. Slaughter them to a man! He's, he hasn't probably seen this kind of deck in a while. Besides to play Morkvark, I actually don't agree Onward, with this decision. Right he should be, um, how would I say it, playing Savage Bears if he has them. But he, one of the reasons why he's doing this is that he has a really long setup involving the longboat ship. I have an Everything option right. with this to uh, kill it with an Azure's Thunder, but I decide against it going for the first light You'll instead. You'll regret your mum ever squirted you out. The reason why is that I'm not afraid of losing this round. And if I do win this round, it's because I have a lot of I'm ways. I'm in no mood for jests. Okay, so my opponent has a lot of carry over. So I'm going to play Bruva. Uh, if I can't Hold play Avalok until I play Bruva Hoog because Avalok can pull to get the cards that I want sport. to play with Bruva Hoog out. And I don't want to play now. So I'm going to use Operator. Fool. Why? Because I have my old trick around strategy to play. Now, it's only going to make a base copy. The developers really didn't want people um, using sappers uh, that way anymore. If he does decide to play the card, I will be able to destroy it with Wily, it's time. which is why I'm hovering over it right now. Now I can play Avalok safely. I get Morin. Uh, my luck with Morin has been on point. I have never 
Got in a bad morn off. No! All together! <laughs> in the four games I've played. It's always been great. Now, they've changed how sh um, Queen's Guard work. It'll no longer pull one from the... Well, he might have one in his hand, is why, actually. It's not that they've changed it. It's just that he has one if in his hand. my coin's rag to you, go kiss a dog neat it. So I kind of count this out of it. So I'm going to start buffing that. It's going to be part of my win condition. He's actually benefits for the longer this round goes on. So that's why he's kind Bow of before draining modern Freya. I also storm is coming. for how long this Let's round enjoy the goes. weather while we still so can. I don't really mind. This is the second time I've seen them uh, pull this card. It's going to be uh, Clear Skies into Rally. It's going to get the uh, Savage Bear. Not one of my favorite cards to deal with. I can now do a Blood Curdling War on his... So I'm going to play... <laughs> <laughs> more and down, and I'm going to act as if it was Teruvial. This will make sure my opponent doesn't know how to react to it. I could have done a Blood Curl <laughs> but I Slow, ain't you? get the chance this time. Now I can destroy his Sapper. This. He still thinks I have Teruvial on, on the board, note. so it's going to cause him to overcommit. Mother will be proud. My Moran gets a fairly good target, since it's going to prevent him from getting the two bonus strength from that. I'm still getting tons of buffs, and I can play another unit and can trick him into thinking Bow it's before modern he cannot Freya. pass if he wants to win this round. Out with the crowns. Come so on, he's going to revive note. his uh, armor smith again, which it's okay. Uh, so I'm going to play one of my win condition cards because I can't really the play the Come here. on, quick now! For your best! I could have played Ida earlier. The time of the white frost I don't really and have white an light is now. Option anymore. But because this round went on really long, I got a lot of value out of my uh, my cards. So he he doesn't really have a way to win. If he plays another card, no! he basically loses. All together! Yeah. Because all I have to do is pass. Because I have such a huge board in terms of power, and because he doesn't have an answer to this kind of this many points he does get to carry a lot of points into the next round though and we have to take that into account a bite of just one more the bug curdling roar is not going to be effective here so we're going to uh, push it out of our hands. We want to have as many uh, other cards in our hand as possible. So we're going to start off with playing Teruvial because it will not uh, flip until later. Uh, the, I, the reason why I put it in that row is because there is a chance that my um, Hawker support gets uh, shot. So I have to play around that. So, I'm going, uh, arguably, I could have played the Hawker support earlier. So, now I'm going to buff. Uh, I should buff the Sappers because if I buff the King of Beggars, it might cause problems. So. We serve her who so is virgin mother and So, my opponent revives another clone. one of his. Uh, Out with the crowns. Come on. Quick now. He just doesn't have enough points on so, the board to beat me here. Things. Now it might not look like it, and you have to take a moment to appreciate how many points this King of Beggars is. <laughs> Only possible due to the fact that I have face-down units. So my opponent passes. It might be because my opponent thought they were going to win this round. 
Waste it was definitely a mistake out. of my opponent to do so, though. If I wanted to win this round even Blue more consistently, mountains! just in case my opponent passed, uh, didn't pass there, I should have just passed immediately the beginning of round two, which would reduce the strength on his board by six because his two, uh, his Morkvark and his Old Geert would um, then have lost, you know, three strengths each. Okay. 